When Sargent paints loose, he becomes the most prolific portrait artist of all time. And when you paint loose, it looks like a third grader sat in your painting. What's the difference? So when you're looking at painting, drawing, anything like that, when you're representing reality in a two-dimensional surface, what you're doing is that you're recording shapes that are the same value, color, and edge. And once you do that, it looks correct. And when people paint loose, the main problem is an edge problem. And I'm gonna go into all these edges and I'm gonna actually tell you how to look and see them because that's the biggest part is actually training your eye to see these things that we just subtly subconsciously pick up on. And once you do that, your art's gonna go a lot further, especially your loose painting. Okay, so what is an edge? If you look at a geometric shape, like a triangle, then you have these three sides, right? And there are three lines. And the, the different sides are what we determine edge to be. So when you're painting, what you're doing is that you're really just simplifying things. And I'm gonna show you just a picture and then a simplified picture that I essentially Photoshopped. And you're gonna see this edge thing or the shape, the shape thing that I'm talking about. You take what it is, you simplify it in these really simple shapes. And once you put those on a canvas and they're the right value, meaning the same, the right light to darkness, it's gonna look real. What's the third variable is the edge. So that the relationship between the two different shapes. Okay, so if you look at edges, they always follow a same sort of pattern. A cast shadow is going to be hard and a, a edge that's turning a form is going to be softer. So you might think, okay, I already know what an edge is. This is irrelevant to my work. Okay, it's really not because even if you know what an edge is, if you don't know how they work in an abstract sense as a rule, then your paintings are most likely going to be wrong unless you're really, really particular and you, you have to really see it before you really understand what you're saying. Because if you paint loose and it doesn't look really like a sergeant for backup, then that's probably because you have an edge issue, but you, didn't, but you don't realize it. So this is very critical. There's a lot of people who are on YouTube, especially who purport that all you need to do is just put in all your value shapes and then you put in a little bit of gradation by putting in a little more wet and wet and then it'll look perfectly fine like Sergeant. That's not really what he did. He was much more deliberate about the edge. So let me show you an example. If we look at this knee, and it's gonna remind you of this painting that I recently finished. So I haven't varnished it or gamboard it at all. That's why there's that reflection there. But I, it's a perfect example of edge work and how there's a variety of edges when you're looking at reality. So if you look at the knee here, one side is sharp, one side is soft. Why is that? Cast shadows are sharp, rolling of the form is soft. Now, are cast shadows always soft? No. If you have a water bottle or an apple or whatever object blocking light, then it's gonna be sharp at the, like closer to the beginning of the object and as it goes out, it's gonna become softer. So you can see that when the sun is sitting and the sun is sitting, like hitting you, you're gonna see that it's sharper by your feet and then as it trails off to your head behind you, it's gonna become softer. Now, if you know all of this and you can actually make the edges softer or harder, it's gonna make it look so much more realistic, like so much more realistic. Now, how do you even see that, okay? If you look, you need to look at references and just really zoom in and think, okay, what am I seeing here? Like you need to really, really put 100% of your focus on it. Is this soft or is this hard? Why is this hard? Why is this soft? And if you really think about that, you're going to start seeing it. Now, a lot of us here already know what a value is. We know that it's light to dark and we can see values. We can record values even accurately, but we don't really see edges the same way. And edges are, are fundamental. They're very important to making things look realistic. So when you're seeing these these lights and dark values, the only way that you're actually able to tell, okay, that's about a mid-tone or that's a light thing is, is through training the eye. It's through taking a reference, trying to copy it. It looks wrong, you fix it up and then it looks, it looks better or whatever, but you're constantly thinking about what it is. You can actually see values in your immediate environment or in photographic reference. So the same thing happens with edges, but people don't talk about them as much, it's very weird. But you need to train your eye to see, okay, that's a soft edge, that's a hard edge. Because if you have a painting with totally screwed up edges on the course or the on the rounded form it's sharp and on the cast shadow it's really soft or something like that then somebody's gonna look at that versus sergeant and they're gonna say okay or any you know sorry whatever anybody actually knows how to do edges zorn and they're gonna say okay i like this sergeant one better okay well why well i don't know it just looks better okay well a lot of being an artist is becoming a detective you're discovering what you actually are subconsciously reacting to what you were born with you have all this implicit programming and you know why you like certain things because it reminds you of more realism. You've seen it every single day since you were born, but you can't articulate it because you, your eye hasn't been trained to see it and you haven't consciously understood the concepts of why things look the way that they do. Okay, so how do you achieve this in different mediums? If you're grabbing charcoal or graphite or something, you're gonna, it's gonna be a little bit different than if you're doing it in painting. So I did this self-portrait a little while ago, about a week ago, and I'll show you the reference versus the actual drawing that I did. Now, I changed a lot of the values and I darkened up the shadows and I changed the, the core shadow and all this other stuff, but the main player in here 
that makes it look more realistic is the edge. So if you look at the nose, for example, see the cast shadow. See, think about how the, how the nose is the blocking the light and then there's the light below and it's casting on the face. Okay, that's gonna be a sharp edge, right? Because cast shadows, especially close to the object are sharp like we talked about. So how do you make that edge, edge sharper? Okay, you could just draw it in and then grab an eraser and sharpen it up or make sure that you're just, you're not using a loose kind of, you're not penciling it in loose. You're like very deliberate and making sharp. You can do, that's one way of doing it. But you can also accentuate that sharp, sharp edge. So how do you make something sharp look even sharper? than you could otherwise by just doing, using value. Okay, well you can use line. So what if when you have a really dark shape and you have a really light shape, and I, I went over this in my last video if you missed it, it was Master's Edges, and I go over actual painting examples in a book, and I'll, I'll, I do it on paper and I can show you. It's really, uh, it's quite an interesting thing. It's an important concept to, to grasp really, because it can help you design things. But if you have, the, the synopsis was, if you have a dark shape and a light shape versus a white shape and a slightly darker shape, just like a little bit though, just like one step down. Okay, which edge is gonna look harder? Well, it's gonna be the contrasting edge. Now, why is that? White against dark is gonna look sharper. Black versus white looks sharper than mid-tone versus darker. Okay, so you can use that principle and make an edge look sharper by outlining it. Now, does that mean you're gonna outline everything? The nose is completely outlined like the cartoon and, and the eyes are, you know, these, okay, no. Because <laughs> in reality, everything has variance, right? If you look at a tree, Nothing is expected, nothing is, you know, the same. It's not crafted by human beings. The way that light hits over form, it's, you can abstract it out and understand why it's doing what it's doing, but you're not gonna have all sharp edges everywhere because it's just not how light works. You're gonna have a variety of edges. And in great art, there's always variety, variety of color, variety of values, variety of whatever, right? It's designed, it's simplified, yeah, sure. But you're still gonna have that variety in there because if everything is just unbalanced in one side, it's gonna look generally ugly. And unless you're going for ugly art, you probably shouldn't do that. But when we're looking at this face, you can see that when the form is curling over, I soften up the edge. Okay, how do I do that? When I'm drawing and I'm actually applying the charcoal on the paper, my stroke is like, okay, so when you go like this and you're kind of roughing it in and the, the ends that the pencil actually ends on are gonna be variable. So it's gonna create this edge that's variable. So that's gonna create a variable edge. This is gonna create a sharp edge right there, right? So experiment on your paper. Try to make some sharp, sharp edges, try to make some soft edges. If you, you'll notice that if you use the side of your pencil, it's gonna become softer. If you lose the, use the tip, it's gonna become harder and sharper. Okay, so what about oil? So this is the main thing. This is how I create all the edges. And this one is I did dry brush, uh, changing the edge. Now, this is where you put it on your paint. It could be all the prima, it could be just you know loose in general. Like this hand, it's pretty loose. Uh, a lot of it's loose. But at the end there, you're gonna think about a lot of the edges. Now, the most important thing is your values and your shapes. If values and shapes are wrong, even if your edges are perfect, it's still gonna look pretty bad. But if you have correct values and shapes, you can kind of get away, you can't really get away from bad edges, but it's gonna look better than you know the opposite. But once you have all the shapes and the values correct, the really foundational stuff, what you do is that you grab a little bit of paint. Let's say I wanna soften that edge, so I'm gonna make a little bit of dark paint, just a little bit, like you know, some burn umber, maybe a little bit of white and just a tiny amount of paint. Put it in like a, you know, whatever, a round brush or just a small brush, and then you just very carefully scrub it. Now, it's gonna be almost indetectable to your eye if you're actually doing anything, but you do it and you scrub across the edge so it blurs it a little bit, and then you're gonna stand back and see if it's correct. Okay, so how do you determine if the edge is correct? Why does it look so much different when you're close up versus far away? Okay, so the practical reason for that is when you're looking at an object really close up, you're gonna see much more detail. Whereas when you get further away, you see less detail. Okay, that makes sense. If you're looking at mountains, you're not gonna be able to see every single nook and cranny and piece of gravel and all this other stuff, right? Well, the same thing happens on a little micro scale when you're stepping away from your painting. And, it's, and the reason why it looks different is because it's changing the edges. The edges are really the details. When something looks sharp and detailed, it has really sharp edges. When you back up from a painting, you're de that's, then you see all the less detail and all the edges soften a little bit. Okay. Does that mean you can make every single edge super soft and all the edges are gonna look, or it's very, very hard and when you back up, it's gonna look perfect? No. <laughs> the way that you see if you actually have your edge correct is to back up, put your reference, which could be from life or your actual photographic reference, put it right next to each other, right? And then when you look at the same, both in the same light, and you see, okay, this one is actually sharper than that one and they're the same size, then that's when you can really determine the edge. You can't really do it close up because you have that trick where everything blends in together a little bit. But then again, if you're doing everything all prima, it's gonna look pretty, pretty sharp. Or it's gonna just look kind of random where some of it's soft, some of it's sharp. So the other thing you can do is the all the prima thing. So if you grab one stroke and they're like this, side by side, 
and using a lot of paint especially it's going to create a sharper edge whereas if they're wet into wet and you overlap them a little bit it's going to kind of blur the edge between them so that's how you do it more wet into wet so you can do these you can do the dry brushing technique you can do the wet wet painting i'm going to use some certain examples here you can see that sergeant didn't didn't use a thousand gradations of wet or wet paint a lot of people do that online now it's one way of doing it, it looks realistic and the problem with that is that first of all it's inefficient it looks kind of too stressed too it it doesn't look as natural or organic or kind of you know energetic and the way that he did skin passages that he did some of this dry brushing but he would also do the wet sometimes it just depended but his the skin tones there if you look at like an arm or their face or something it's you can always see the edges like not everything is very sharp like you put it all in all cream and didn't edit the edges so even sergeant you really get focused on the brushwork especially in the clothing where it is loose because all the clothing folds generally are pretty sharp so he does a lot of brushwork and that kind of distracts you makes you think everything in the painting must be brushy and super loose okay that's not true when you make skin passages really loose and brushy and all the edges are really hard and they're all, all uh wet to wet and you don't edit the edge you don't you don't blur it at all what's going to happen is it's going to look wrong because it is wrong right so what i would suggest is going general to specific and then once you have in all your value shapes and then the correct value, uh, you know, the correct shape, then you start thinking about edge and then color on top of that as the final horizon after edges. And once you do that, things are going to look so much better because this is one thing that people don't really talk about. Now, they, they talk about it a lot in the sense that they say the word, oh, oh, yeah, I'm doing edge work now. I'm doing edges. They don't actually say, OK, look at like, look at this. This is soft. <laughs> this is soft right here. This is hard. They don't do that. That's really important to train your eye to see, though, because that's what differentiates generally just an amateur intermediate from more of a master. I hope a lot of this helped. Uh, if you want to look at some of your own sergeant paintings, go to Google Art and Culture. I'm not like there's no sponsorship or anything. I just use them personally, and it's really convenient for me because I can see like what things actually look like up close. Uh, but I hope you learned something. I hope your art improves. And mention anything below if you have any comments or questions or things you're wondering about, things, videos you'd like me to make, anything, just leave them down. Tell me how your day was. Doesn't matter. I hope you all learned something. I hope you all have a great day and all the best. Go make something beautiful.